Who needs Cody's cordial when you got that? <laughs> Children. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, welcome back, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us again. We've got a new segment, something uh, that we've been wanting to try for a little while now. Of course, in the world of wine, every winemaker has a vintage. Uh, every vintage that got new releases coming out. And it's always a really fun thing for me, uh, obviously as a wine lover, winemaker, uh, and part of the trade, is always looking through the ranges and actually seeing how sort of these winemakers have developed their philosophy, their skill set, working with new vineyards or working in new ways. Um, so we thought that would uh, turn a little bit of attention towards you know, our particular producer. It's not obviously blind. You could, we can see the wines. We know what we're tasting. Uh, with the aim to be able to go, hey, let's see how this winemaker's wines are looking uh, this particular year. What are the standout wines for us? Um, and we get to explore a little bit uh, about this particular producer. So uh, this here is uh, are the wines, the new release, the 2021 release of uh, Travis Townsend. Uh, so Travis Townsend is actually uh, an incredible gentleman, um, a, a very sort of, uh, sort of, what do they call him? Like a quiet achiever. Okay. He's a, a uh, quite a reserved gentleman who most people don't know is actually largely responsible for a large proportion of this, this rapid growth of natural wine in Adelaide. So uh, when I moved to Adelaide, Travis was kind enough to give me my first job working behind a bar uh, at Cork Wine Cafe. Oh, sorry, yes. Travis. <laughs> <laughs> so sorry. Uh, he did fire me. Uh, <laughs> But that said, um, no, Travis uh, and Mich his ex-wife Michelle set up uh, and, and really sort of grew something called Cork Wine Cafe and it was the hub of the natural wine scene in sort of 2008, 2009 and of course he got bit by the winemaking bug and he really sort of approaches these with like a really single-minded uh, sort of philosophy that is just so, uh, you know, incredibly interesting to be able to see year by year and he does something that I think other people, other winemakers don't do, which is really long elevage and bottle. Mm. But we'll get there. So we're going to start off with his first uh, wine. So these are the only 2020 wines. The rest are all 2019. Uh, these are the Hay Pup Whites. Are they 2019 or 2021, did you say? So this is a 2020. So the yeah. Hay Pup Whites 2020 vintage. Um, so this here is a, a field blend. Uh, in the truest sense of the word, I do believe it all does come from a single vineyard. Uh, and basically just randomly picks wines and then just shoves in the ferment. The ferment kicks along and then he'll pick another one or just shove that in when it's ready. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so it's just this continually evolving, sort of like feeding feeding a um, uh, like a sourdough starter or something like that. Like a yeah. port barrel. Uh, sure, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's a bit like sourdough. It's a little bit like that. So uh, the Hay Pup White, um, so it is a like 2020 field blend, oh, something cheers. fun. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah, cheers. <laughs> yeah. That's rare that we get to do this. Uh, really uh, yeah, exactly. And what's ex especially interesting for me is actually mm. seeing these wines fresh because Travis is a, I believe, a no sulfur um, yeah. a producer, really hardcore as to how he wants uh, grapes grown and how he sees sort of like wine making fitting to the grand sort of spectrum of, of culture and being in touch with the land. Um, and one of the more, like I said, every year his wines just keep getting better and better and better and better. Mm -hmm. um, they are really uh, reaching at the moment. So these being capped, they're, are they pet nuts? What's going on? Why are they capped not corked? There's an interesting thing here in amongst like natural wine circles where sometimes people will actually cap them because they do expect them to go through a, another fermentation yep. and kick up a lot of a lot of gas. This has a little bit of a gaseous nature to it, but mm. um, spritzy. The, the methodology here is probably immensely more interesting and I believe, um, you know, to seal something with a crown seal, it's actually really hard to seal it back up again. The, yeah. whole, the whole point here is drink quick, drink it now. Drink if it. you open it, you're opening it to drink it. You're yeah. not opening it to like store it and come back to it in a couple of days. Yeah. It's just, just open it, have a yeah. few mates around, everyone have a glass. Get rid Sweet. of it. And then and look, we can move on to another oh. one. How's the acidity on this? It's searing, it's racing, peaky. Structure's really cool. It's um it's, the, the aromatics is really really lifted and pretty mm. grassy, like all that kind of nice white nectarine, stone pretty kind of thing. Mm. I'll be drinking that with raw dishes. Like some give me something raw, give me something charred. I want radishes and hummus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I want more of the wine to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to And what's this? That <laughs> so this is what we call a spittoon, Henry. I know oh, you have, I know that's you, what you guys are always talking about. I know you about. haven't used one of these before. <laughs> so from fun little white things to fun little red things, this is also a field blend. Um, so it this is, is the, uh, the other side of the coin. Uh, so oh, uh, yeah. another little uh, red co-ferment, different grape varieties. I don't think this actually ferments for very long, obviously on its skins, because the colour is is you know quite uh, 
yeah. translucent. What's really impressive is uh, I'm pretty confident that um, uh, in saying that Travis wouldn't be doing any any form of filtration here, and the wine yeah. isn't like. Is, is really so quite he's definitely like yeah. had this settle in stainless for a while. For a while, or he's just really talented at racking the wine, or he's found some other ways to be able to achieve that. But um, they they definitely look incredibly, uh, incredibly. Love clear. the smell of this as well. Like really bright red cherries and strawberries and all that kind it's, of. It's old world fun. It's got an old yeah. world appeal, an old world vibe uh, to these. These have come so far. These are actually fantastic. Um, that's these awesome. Are, yeah, that's out of the two so far, that'll be my For favorite. For me, absolutely. For that one? Yeah. yeah, 100%. That's like, again, acidity is really high up. A little bit more grip mm -hmm. structure, uh, even though it's still pretty light on for tannin, it's definitely got some structure there. It's delicious. Shit, you could drink that. I will. Glad to. See, yeah. see me out on the Brooklyn balcony just guzzling this. Yeah. That's really, it finishes really nice. Mm. Whereas this had that sort of umami, sort of what we call that puppy breath finish, mm -hmm. that sort of slight lick of, of going a little bit barnyardy and funky. This finish is sublime. This yeah, is just smooth. fans out. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, super cool. Who needs Cody's cordial when you got that? <laughs> Children. Fuck <laughs> 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 That's a fair point. That's a fair point. <laughs> All right, so let's move on to some more serious stuff. Um, cool. So it does actually get significantly serious from here. And the reason why uh, I've been a big fan of Travis's stuff since he's begun is um, this sort of dedication to long Elevage and bottle. It's not something that we often see uh, in wine circles. Mm. And what I mean by this is um, essentially he's made a wine, typically bottles them quite quickly with the exception of one wine that spends a little bit more time in oak, bottles them pretty quickly, then leaves them in bottle for two years to release. Right, so that's when you're saying these are 2019. All of yeah. these it's are 2019. It's the 2021 release, but yeah. it's the 2019 vintage. Correct. Cool. Correct. So they're sitting in bottles for a long time. Yeah. Fine. So, so the vineyards, sorry. No, no, it's all good. The vineyards are based um, all on the southern, uh, basically the southern tip of Adelaide Hills. Anywhere south from this, you're really talking McLaren Vale. Um, so your Hope Forest is yeah, where cool. it is. So super south, past Kaipo, um, mm -hmm. almost as far south, I think, as you can really get inside you the Adelaide Hills. You can see Yankiller. Essentially. Pretty much. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. Uh, so this is Sivas, a Sauvignon Blanc Semillon, um, but obviously not as you know it. Uh, smells great. Oh, mm. There's almost a botrytized apricot kernel thing going on here. And I'm not aware of any botrytis in 2019. It was a pretty hot, pretty dry year, but it certainly I don't think it, it doesn't smell like it was picked really late, so you'd be surprised. I think I caught some from a public shower last year. <laughs> So oh, that's salty. Really that's like bloody that. delicious too. But also like a little bit lemony. I don't know. Yeah, it's yeah, got a super really cool lemony. lemon pith. What's really fascinating, especially about even in reference to the 2020 wines, there is this really intricate acid profile. Mm. It fans out across the tongue, but it still remains really sort of pointed. Oh, I wanna I wanna drink that with like fish and chips down by the beach. Fuck yeah, dude. Let's go. That'd be great. Matani Matani chicken salt, I reckon. It's an amazing wine. Makes sense. Good. That's that's brilliant. Really, yeah, great that's stuff. my favourite so far. Well, I've had this wine a few times in multiple different vintages. So this is Albert. So last year uh, Albert appeared on our um, our live stream show. Yep. Um, and it sort of triggered a couple of regular people to, to actually jump, pounce on it, and actually pick up uh, like a couple of does. Nice. Um, and this, is why, this is my favorite wine. It's, said to be, it's actually the only one I have tried of his, but I love this one. So favorite and least favorite, unfortunately. Yeah, exactly. My law of averages. <laughs> yeah. the nature of... It's interesting how that works. Um, so we've got Albert here, which is 100% Chardonnay, uh, matured in cask for only a moderate period of time before uh, maturing a bottle, of course, for the extra 18 months. Oh. So savory, like savory. Like the ocean. savory. Yeah, it's just like down the wood. docks, sort of. Yeah, and you gotta sort of expect it from a producer like this. That the the wines themselves are obviously reflecting the site they come from, and this is so close to the ocean. Like this is, yeah. this is at the very top of where sort of McLaren Vale begins, mm. um, and so there's an incredible saline influence here. This is right before the the area itself starts to become fractured and sandy. Um, Someone said maritime. It's very maritime. Uh, is it is where continental becomes maritime. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That's fun. once again this one. Is simply delicious. Yeah, that's a really nice shot. I love this one. Wow. Great, great texture, really nice acidity. For a three-year-old wine, that's still got so much freshness. Yeah, no, I, I, I honestly, if I bought this, I'd want to see this in probably another year. At I'd, least. I'd be really comfortable. And can remember, all of these wines are practically the same price. Mm. So on a shelf, they're probably somewhere up near like sort of like the mid to high 30s. I think this Aussie. is about 35 bucks across the board. Yeah. Wow. 
very impressive yeah. value. And especially Amazing from value. like a, a die-hard, true to style natural winemaker as as committed as you could possibly find. Um, uh, these, these are probably some of the most, they, they never were, they never were this consistent. He's starting to put out banger after banger after banger. So he's, he's really, he's come into his groove. He's just craft. He's just smashing And he's understanding over. the site as well. I think yeah. you know, he's, you know, it's like, all right, cool, this is what I need to do to make this happen. And now, again, leaving it in bottle for a long period of time and just not being happy until everything's perfect or at least as perfect as you can get. And with um, three years, you've got more than enough time for these things to Oh. to move and shift and change and it's, it's an incredibly difficult thing it's a really interesting thing because you'd be making the wine and then you're tasting two years ahead and you're doing things two years behind so you're Correct. only really seeing you can only really yeah. factor in your results like you stagger it that's sort of yeah. a weird thing to try and think Correct. about so it's imagine what 2021 is going to taste like yeah, yeah. stupid. so like this difficult. is sort of two years behind where he currently is as a winemaker as well in terms of you know the exactly 2021 vintage is going to be off the shelves. It, it does sort of get to a point where now he'll have 2021 vintages just in cast. 2019 has been in bottle for two years and is now being released. 2020 would already be in bottle as well. And so the ability to have sort of three vintages sitting there before you've even released and before you've even gotten public comment to be able to shift and change something here, knowing full well of the shift that happened here, it's almost like a a really um, methodical approach to data gathering and winemaking mm. that mm. I find is is one of Travis's amazing sort of fortes uh, in his winemaking, and it shows in the wine. They have a rawness and a character and a soul, but they're just so well tailored now. Yeah, that's um, that's precise. Big that's yes for me. Ten out of ten. That's very cool. All right, you me. So we're jumping into Pinot territory. We've got a couple of Pinots. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Wonderful. Um, and I believe these are two sort of Pinots <coughs> that... I'm not sure. The way that um, I believe they get presented is actually uh, sort of, I guess, at, at different levels, but they are actually the same price point. So um, they're just two completely different styles of Pinot. This is Pinot Noir that's only really seen uh, sort of two to three days of skin contact. So it's a very little amount of skin contact before it gets pressed off. Fermented in stainless steel. Um, and then I believe bottled pretty early. I'm not too sure if it spends a little bit of time in oak. Oh man, this is all like geraniums and like yeah. crushed rose petals. It's this beautiful, like, but yeah, savory. Like balsamic strawberry kind of like Yeah, aroma. Yeah, but yeah, I can yeah. say balsamic and like this almost smells like balsamic vinegar. Like not, it, you know, it's not it, vinegar, it does it's have delicious. elevated levels of volatile acidity, but that's, that's just part and parcel with these kind of things. And I personally like stuff. that. Yeah, um, and it, it really adds this really vibrant character to it. I think it's um, like this a Venice quality. Like when you drink it, you go, you're drinking a wine. Mm -hmm. You're drinking like this sort of fruit juice. Yeah, it's not fruit juice. It's no. wine, and it's, a, it's purposely done that way. Yeah, no, it's very, very, and cool. it's refreshing. That's a refreshing Pinot. Yeah. All right, moving onwards and upwards. Found a lot of winners here uh, mm -hmm. so far. Uh, there's there's nothing here that I would say I, nothing would, I, would, I would avoid. No, nothing I'd turn back. No. Um, there's some stuff that'll probably jump out sooner rather than later. I think Great. stylistically, um, that one's probably just for me personally my least favorite. Still, yep. it's very nice, but it's just mm, it's not definitely that a challenging style, style of wine that I'm looking for. Well, let's yeah. check out this because this is a Pinot and a, another Pinot, um, and I think this will be more of a. Uh, oh no, Ooh, still it's still pretty light. Still, still, yeah. yeah. still pretty light. Uh, still got. It's starting to turn into that more darker red fruit character, which I really like. So this is Nana and Pa. Um, I'm sure named after his Nana and Pa, no doubt. Oh, let's smell this one more. This it has so uh, quite often you'll hear people that are tasting Pinot talking about. Oh, it's got real pinosity. And it thanks is, for being so vague. Yeah. It's stupidly vague. It's stupidly vague. It's got real liquidity to it. Like what? <laughs> It's very vinous. Um, yeah. No, but this is this is actually really interesting. So Pinocity is that sort of varietal character that really only Pinot really shows you. And this has that whole bunch of Pinot, cherry, sour cherry, tartness. Yeah, that, strobes. Yeah, you can't really associate it with any other grape variety. This has been done remarkably well. Um, oh, yeah. That's a Pinot. That's a Pinot that creeps wow. up on you because the colour is so wow. delicate. Well done, man. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. I really like that. It's again, it's not as serious as I've tried a lot of Pinot. It's not about that kind of like earthy forest floor character. It's still all about vibrancy. It still shows itself in your little licks, but not like mm. driven by that kind of flavor. Um, I think that's delicious. That's, do you, can you see the difference in power and weight yeah. between these two? Yeah. Like, this I, is so much more complex. It's just acidity, you know? That mm. one's all about drink now, drink it cold. Yeah. Um, have it in the summer. You can definitely food. see that. This sure. one's like just appreciate this one for what it is. And it, it's it's seeing that go down and the other level go up, it's really cool. That's amazing. You really pick that up on the palate mm. straight away, like mm. as soon as it hits. That's a really impressive uh, 
Pinot, Hills Pinot. What we were saying before with that uh, Yumi, Yummy, uh, cold with some prosciutto with your degustation mm -hmm. boards, absolutely. This by itself, the, like, I yeah, think I'd prefer yeah. to drink this as a standalone. I wine. think if you ran out of your cheese board, but you still wanted some wine, you'd crack open this after you finished with that. Um, all right, last one. Sitting in a tree. I like the naming conventions mm -hmm. of, of these wines. It's fine as well. It's just, it's really um, nostalgic. They're so nostalgic. It suits the style of the wine as well. Like all of the labels just being really simple. It's like it's handwritten. It's someone who cares a lot about it. And it's just like this really, uh, I don't know, artisanal handwriting. For sure. Look it up. So, wow. What's going on here? <laughs> this, believe it or not, is Merlot. Fuck yeah. Uh, Merlot. Yeah. Underrated. Severely underrated. Severely, severely underrated. Hated on for no reason. Obviously, not a lot of skin contact. And again, still. Even with this amount of, or lack thereof, of skin contact, and I guess the, the fortification that it would receive through phenolics, he's still maturing it for two years in bottle, you know, before release. These are, it's an incredible feat to even hold stock See, for now, that long. This, uh, out of the out of the reds, out of the Yumi, the Nana, the Nana and Pa, and the Sitting and Tree, I, this on the nose for me is my favourite by far. It's got this cool, like, olive-y thing. Like, yeah. you just open, like, a jar of Kalamata yeah. olives. It's yeah. not well, quite, like, the tapenade thing that a lot of people say. It's just a little bit briny. No one's really good at this. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh like every time I'm sitting here drinking blind wines, being like, oh, what does that smell like? What does that smell like? No, it's just like, oh, olives. Of course it does! <laughs> <laughs> no, that smells incredible. Like, again, lifted VA, probably a little bit higher. I oh, know, 11.7% alcohol so these are all Still really low screaming look a 10.2 percent alcohol from a winemaking perspective like again just banging on about this maturation and bottle thing you simply wouldn't do this most winemakers these days wouldn't see rosé effectively into it like it's it's not really a light red it's more like a heavier rosé into bottle for two years at 10.2 percent alcohol with no sulfur yeah it's heresy but the wines look fantastic. Mm. You know, it's incredibly a tough thing, skilled thing, high risk thing to do. Um, and this is looking, like you said, on this, the nose straight up the bat. This is my favourite of the three reds that we've had so it's far. It's probably the most, I, I'd say probably the most interesting on the palate. It's got this really lovely sailing savoury character. I was going to say, if you had to choose, if, if we all have to choose a red and a white, yep. what, what are you going for? If I'm going to go a white wine, Albert for me. Albert. Always, uh, uh, it's cool to try the other ones, but it's, Albert still takes the cake for me. Uh, red wine, hey pup, number one. I reckon that's the one I just wanted to drink endless. Uh, for me, I'm gonna go the sea bass as my white wine. I right. just, as soon as I tried that, I was just thinking like hot chips, lemon, this, yeah. just pairing it with yeah. that. And for the red, sitting in the tree, this uh, this has taken me a little bit. Uh, Hey Pup was really enjoyable, but I'm, I don't know if I'm quite into that style of red wine at the moment, but this sitting in the tree, yeah, it's doing it for me, I'm into it. Well, this is good. I agree with the Hey Pup comment. I would totally choose that. Would you call this a red or a white? Is that, does it have to be a red choice? Because my red choice is actually this. Um, no, it's what color? No. What color is it? Okay, it's red. That's red. <laughs> <laughs> we can't be Don't choose this. two reds. This is my white wine. <laughs> No. Uh, okay, well in that instance, <laughs> sea bass uh, for the white. Big fan of sea bass. Big fan of the Albert as well, but um, that Nana and Pop, Nana and Pa, sorry. Uh, I was really taken with just the, the, the sort of dovetail effect across the palate that was almost instantaneous. You knew you were drinking a Pinot, and just knowing that it is, you know, it's alcohol content, it's skin contact regime, uh, as well as um, uh, the amount of time in bottle. It's just so impressive. I'm just, I'm in awe as a winemaker as well, considering what, you know, he's managed to achieve. But uh, yeah, catch you all in a week.